We're here to talk through this double minesweeper by John Bolton called Stepwise. It has a large set of diagonally adjacent clues, varying most often not in large ways. Actually, this 838 looks pretty interesting. And this big with small, and like this 28 over here looks interesting. To help myself out, I'm going to turn on something I would do if I were on paper, which is a number mode, so I can mark some values on corners. I'm going to go to red here. Um, here's, a, here's a case where I've got a two clue, which says that across these cells I have zero, one, or two uh, mines put in, but this five needs to have at least three, maybe four in these cells for this to work out. And so there's a kind of notation, which is that I can put two here, which leaves behind three, or I can put one here, which leaves behind four, but I know for sure I have three or four mines here and one or two mines here. I could write in zero, one in the cell uh, if you want to sort of mark everything in, and maybe that's helpful, so I'll do that for now. But start to mark some of these constraints in, and then you get, for instance, that there are um, at least single mines in these cells. There may be two mines in both of these cells, but the single mines start to give us a partial count. So for instance, this four no longer has the ability to put four into these two cells in green. It can put now uh, a maximum of three. And we'll see that because it's touching this eight clue, this will be two or three, and the remaining cells here will equal five or six. And so that those will have to take single cells, and we've got a constraint across them. Let's maybe take a surface color and just say we're going to keep thinking about these three in pink as we go forward. I guess that's doing something we can't do on paper, which is mark sets of cells that are worth noting. Here's another space, this three touching the six, where there are two more cells around the six. So this contains three mines or four mines, but we need to have at least two, but no more than three in the space for this to work out. That puts the three or four here. This being a three or four means this is a one or two. And this being a one or two means across these four cells that the nine clue sees, we're going to have seven or eight uh, left to go. So let me mark those. And we know that this yellow set is seven or eight, and seven or eight will have singles in all those positions. Actually, like around the seven, you know, where seven of the eight potential mines are filled, we'll always have singletons in different spots. We get some start here. And I said at the very beginning, this two touching this eight looked important. And um, here, the actual communication looks to be broader than that. This is like this two into this eight, into this space, into this four. But let's sort of think about things. The two has as many as two mines across these two cells which means the eight can have as many as four more mines here. And I can write another kind of number clue. This is two, three, four plus, but this has to have at least two. Now if this, there are at least two in those cells, this is no longer a two, three, this is a two. And there's no way to put any cells in that number because this four sees two plus two. And in doing that, we actually complete these cells. If this is two, this has to be four here for sure. We have to put two across these cells and none in this cell, so this actually has to take a single one. And so this is this is some of the thinking that we're, we're getting to, and it's, it's hard, but it's the way that you get communication across these grids. And so I'm going to actually say, like, I fulfilled all the meaning behind these clues. The eight, actually, I've now touched to this five. So this five has two here, so it has a max of three here, and that's now hitting this yellow space. We used to have said this could be seven or eight. Now it has to be seven, so these get marked in. Um, that means that this number is a force two, which means this number is a force three, which means this is also a three. This is marked off. We can put a singleton here for sure. We can mark these cells off. That means this is where two go. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So uh, that's not gonna work if that's way, sorry. I can put another in here. So that's, that's you know, this is what I need to see. I can put in this, but now this four is fulfilled. So these are all done, but this seven needs to become a seven. So this comes in, this stays the single, and I'm using green to mark finished cells. So until a, a single mine is in green, it could still have more. Um, this five now has a double here, a double here, and none here. So we'll mark these off. I have a total of two around this, three around this. I don't know that I have more I can do there yet, but we've got a good start. Let's look at some other spots. I said this 383 was another spot that was interesting just because of the big gap around it. And so here's one of the reasons for that. Now thinking about the same kind of logic we used over here. This position near the eight is the first one looks important because we can have as many as six other mines. So this always takes two, could take three. That means like this position has zero or one near it, which means across these cells, we'll again go back to a color, there are seven or eight. 
So all of these have to be filled with at least a single mine. That now communicates up uh, to this five, it looks like. So this five now has at least, actually let me mark this better. This is a three, four in the same way. This is a three, four. That's another way this is saying it's a seven, eight is doing that partial proof. This five now only has two left to go. And into this eight clue, this stepwise diagonal kind of clue, it has six more spots around it. And all of those must be fulfilled for this to um, work out. And so this is a constraint we can put into the grid. That requirement of this two means this is exactly a three down here, which means this is a four. And we can fill in these double cells. We can mark off these cells and uh, come back with some green color here. This five will always have to have at least one mine here. And actually this seven needs to have at least one mine in each of these four cells. Let's come over to this space. This six has two left. That's going to cause some issues near this five. So we probably need to have one or two mines here, but it's going to cause issues near this six where this can take four away from that six. And so we get this as a situation that marks these off. Uh, that actually means this four has to take these. So this has to be filled. This has to be filled to split out the two, completing the four clue, completing the five clue, completing this six clue, completing this six clue. There's one more to go down here. This nine has five cells filled, so it has four across all of these. Does that tell us much? Actually, this one may be more useful. So let's think about this for a bit. If this is a one, we have seven left across these cells, or as many as eight. And um, that's going to put a constraint like three or four on the cell which is actually going to place some constraints around this five clue because this already has at least this mine. And so how are we going to make this nine clue work? We have four more mines to go. That means this is also a three, four. So one thing we know is we actually have to fill these as mines. If these two up top are mines, then this can't be a four. This has to be a three. And this is now not a mine and these are finished. So this is now a total of six with three to place, and I can only put one in the cell. So I do place one in that cell, place two in that cell, and I finish the five, I finish the nine. These cells are all good. Um, this five takes one more mine here, and now this five is good. This eight has four placed with four more to place, so here and here. That makes those good. This was a two or three, so that's still true, but I have to place at least a mine here. This being green means this is actually where the three goes, and that being a seven forces us to be the split for the eight, and that does now finish these cells here. So mark all these off. This five is now done. That means we have to double over here for that seven to get done. This nine has seven around it, so it has two more to go. This eight has four around it, so it has four more to go, so these are all fours. This five now has two more to potentially place, and I want this more to be a number, but those being two means this has to be two there. This nine has either, well, it has what looks to be two or three in the space, actually has to be three, it makes this two, and marks that cell off for this count to work. This five though has four around it here, so it can take one here and two there, and now these cells are all complete and known. That's able to be marked off. This step up top has to take at least a single in these cells, which leaves as many as one here, which says that this is two or three. This being one says this is five or six. That's gonna put in singles across these cells at least. This seven now having five, maybe six, means there's uh, one or two, sorry, one or two in these cells, which means there's five or six in these cells. So these have to have at least singles. That now means this four has at most three in these cells, so always has to have at least one here. So this will be a two, three, and this will be a one, two cell. Let me do some stuff around the nine. So the nine has six cells to it, but we've got two or three here, which means this is one or two, which means around this is seven or eight. So this is a case coming back to where we had these counts. This is a five, six set, and these are all singles at least. Let's mark those in. 
looking for some more big communication and we're going to run into it but you can see this is a puzzle it's got a lot of these subtle uh, deductions that all work together so that's count looks fine that's still fine I didn't mark in but I should mark in these singles with this now having four around that seven, I can have no more than three here, but I can have two or three here. I can have two or three here. I always have to have one or two across those in this cell. Does that help me any? Well, I was saying this is a one, two cell, which means this is five, six. So I have to take uh, these singles. That means this is this is at least three, so this is at most two, could be one, but actually with six around it, this has to be two, so this has to be three, so this has to be two, so this is one, so one, two, all of these will filled in, the six is finished, so this comes down, the seven has one more to see, we have to now split out that five, so this, uh, I'm going to go back to green, this all looks good. This looks good around the seven and the six and that. This is effectively solved through the numbers in the grid. Uh, we have one more around this, which means this nine has enough space for eight if we use all those. That actually finishes this five. So this has to take a second here and two more here for that count to work out. It also means there's a nine up here. So all of these cells are now finished. The six is finished, the five is finished. We're left with two more to place over here. This is two, we said this was one or two, this was two or three, so it's probably coming back. This eight, here we are. This eight has a now a total of eight, that puts in one here. Um, this can take one or two, but to get this to seven, one plus two plus two plus two is the way that goes. So these are all now forced and fulfilled. The seven cleared off that cell, so this is a singleton. That now finishes that seven. This is one, two, three, four. This is one or two. This is now one or zero. So that means there's always a mine here. Does that help us? Uh, now there's seven around here, so we have as many as two up here. That might eventually come handy. There's probably something else to do, but let's since we have most of this corner finished, let's sort of work through this. This seven is finished. So this has to take an extra, this takes an extra, this takes an extra. That now looks like all these clues are fine. Um, it's going to be this count here. So this six sees four, so sees two here. So this has to be doubled. That now finishes this seven clue, which means that for this five up top, that's got to get doubled. So these cells are now all good. Uh, the six now does see three across these, so it doesn't see another cell down here, so this has to be two in this cell. This has to see it as, say, three, but it has to be one for this four to work out. That means this has to double for the seven to work out, so all these cells are now forced as they're given the grid. This is now a clean three, so we'll just move the note over, and this four is finished, so we'll actually color in those cells. That's going to force us to double down here. It's going to force us to double here uh, for 9 to get up to 9 with a single there. These are all marked in. This is marked off, and this will finish the puzzle. So we got through this grid with some creative notation, but some good notation. So hopefully you got a sense of how to use these red numbers and think about these joining sets, and also how to mark single uh, cells that are fulfilled or not fulfilled as you're working towards the double mine positions across them. But there's a reason we really like the Double Minesweeper style. It featured before in the Art of Puzzles 2 collection. So if you'd love to see more of these, you can buy the Minesweeper section of that book or the whole book if you actually want a whole wealth of puzzles. So thanks, John, for this challenge. Thanks for you for watching this video, and we'll see you again soon.